match is now officially a Judy Bagwell on a forklift match. Hi, handsome. <laughs> Are you down? I didn't, I didn't have a cold open. Neither did I. I'm very cold. It's cold here in Michigan. It was hot a week ago. It's always hot here. It's like forklift. We're good. We're cold one week, but then we're hot next week. I think we've been pretty hot the last few weeks. Let's see if we can continue that. You know what's really weird about the forklift thing, too, is now I get people sending me. I get random people, and the random person in this case is my wife, sending me uh, news articles about people getting crushed to death by forklifts. It's really weird. And I'm like, why would you do that? And she goes, because it said forklift in it. And I was like, thanks. Appreciate it. Well, not that's, being crushed by a forklift right now. I'm Clinton Davis. You can find me at PK Batman on Twitter. I refuse to call it X. To my right, as always. It's the only app that will dead name. The only thing will dead name, in fact. I'm the Hoochie Daddy Ethan James. You can find me at Hoochie Daddy EJ on Instagram. You're not going to find me on uh, Twitter unless it is on a forklift wrestling podcast, which you can find us at on a forklift pod on Twitter, on a forklift wrestling podcast on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music. And whatever else it is. Um, and Thursday nights at 8, uh, preceding my wife and kids. We swapped the time slots. I know. It just feels like they weren't doing so well in the ratings, so they took our slot to boost a rating or two. You know how it is. We drive We're the, the lead in here. now. Yeah. We, we, are the, we are the Big Bang Theory to their, to their dynamite. Yes. But we have a very, very special guest with us. And a guest... That doesn't want us introducing him because he sent a video. So. Ah, uh, everyone, welcome to the show. Got to close enough. <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> Preston Riker, Mister Party himself. How are you doing tonight, brother? Fantastic, fantastic. The pleasure to be here. Pleasure is all ours. Trust us, it is. Oh, <laughs> because uh, you were one of the first people we met when we started going to indie shows. We met yeah, you were cool. just very easy to approach because fuck, you're Mister Party, and. Yeah. We were just easy to come up and talk to. So thank you after all this time for being on the show. Thank you. I mean, hey, guys, it's, it's taking a little bit of time, but I, I got something huge to bring to you guys today. So we're, thank you. We're very, very excited. Just from the little pre-screenings we've seen, we can't wait to go into great detail with that. We're going to do that a little bit later. But first, Ethan, yes. do you think we should just start off with the question? Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Ask. The question? There's a big question we ask every person that comes on the show. It's the most important question in professional wrestling. You're on the road a lot. You travel. You don't always yeah. have time for a good home-cooked meal. But you know what you have time for? Fast food. So what is your favorite fast food franchise? I got a story on this, actually. It's, I don't have a favorite fast food franchise. I have one favorite fast food. Okay. It's a, Or I should say item. And I'm traveling with everybody knows this guy ace evans right and <laughs> sean porter and we're going to i think it was was it waffle house no it was it was, it was some place it was a diner right it was right after uh uh not pure pro it was, it was a show up in michigan right and anyways we go there and it god it's gotta be at least 1 a.m and um this is the day before uh upw for Peter up in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And I love hard boiled eggs. I love them, love them, love them. And I, 
<laughs> you could even ask Ace next time you see him. I ordered six hard boiled eggs and two pieces of bacon and toast. That's it. And I'll just eat them. And I'll eat are them you, forever. Are you Elwood Blues by any chance? I need toast. White. Matter of fact, I have I have uh, <laughs> proof of, of this. I wasn't expecting this. So I oh, if you send it, I can pop it on the screen. It's too good to not show. So let me send this to you right now. And Ace, if you're watching, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> this was his reaction when the waitress heard my story that I needed hard boiled eggs ASAP. And she had to make them by hand. It was so mad. So mad. <laughs> 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 so every time he calls <laughs> on like Facebook or or whatever, right? That that pops yeah. up. <laughs> that's almost that's that's like that's that TJ Meyer just <laughs> level of of right. photo. Oh man, I do love me some TJ Meyer too. I don't love hard boiled eggs. I, no? I, I will not lie to you. I like that's my very, eggs. It, I like my eggs to be scrambled with some okay, toast yeah, you do. in it, with some bread you, dipped in, and <laughs> cooked on a pan. That's the most important thing. Wait, That's French it. toast, is what that yeah, is. Yeah, I like my eggs like, or you know, mixed in a batter that is somehow a dessert, like you know, a brownie or a cake or oh. a meringue pie. <laughs> I, you can, you can love me. That's, that's cool. What? Prerogative. I don't know. Speaking I, of prerogatives, he was talking to himself a little bit. He was. <laughs> yeah, you got to my party juice. <laughs> I did. I did have a little party juice. Um, that party juice is called Celsius. Oh, mine's mine's called wool. You know, it's it's a weekday, so it's water. You know. Oh yeah, of course. We only drink I water the, on the weekdays. It's right. the, the good old H Q O. No, Preston, you I drink you thirsty ass bitch. Sorry, I'm just getting a little bit <laughs> there. Cheers to that. The hard boiled eggs, and then you have some shows coming up because we wanted to do the show part like at the beginning this time. A little thing because this is like the this is like the sprinkling on what is the big appetizer on the big fucking dinner tonight. Yeah, the the sprinkling yeah. before you roll. Well, off your you don't. <laughs> yes. So we have a couple flyers. Uh, hold on. So this one is called KOA. Um, it's one of my favorite shows to be a part of. Um, I am in the main event against my trainer, Congo Kong. Um, very excited for this match. It's gonna be a good, good old, you know, old school, hard hitting match. A little bit of comedy, a lot of fighting. Um, this man is damn near seven foot tall, damn near 300 pounds. And yeah, I'm six foot five, and he's in the you know, attempt to kick Mr. Party's ass. Ain't gonna happen though. You just I'm made sorry. The... I'm undefeated at KOA and uh that's a shoot. So yeah, you bring up uh Congo and he just took on uh he wasn't in the match, but he got involved, but he just had a run in with Ace Steve, uh Evans this past yeah. Friday at Horse Slam. I've seen that. So mm -hmm. you know, Ace really, you know, try to give it to uh Congo, but it didn't work. Yeah, that yeah. that not even a move was just uh if i if you know if, if he ever hits me with that i, I don't look that big i might die <laughs> if anybody wants to know where you can find this match at it's at the koa right off of us 23 and summerfield road i'm Exit very aware of this place um and uh they got a water slide so i don't know if you're gonna work that into something it's april it's a little chilly who knows well, it's never too cold to be partied by mr party there you go we have this one coming up on May 4th. That is one of my favorite shows. Last year, I got to debut for Marquette Mania, but this is Marquette Mania 2, and a lot of fantastic big-name people. I'm actually going to be one of the Royal Romo entrants. Um, had a huge uh, pop there last year, and just very grateful to be back and uh, have an opportunity. It'll be a fun show. There's definitely some big names on there. Got a, got a Mr. Anders. You got Mr. Anderson's on there. Um how are you yeah, going to skip over Shark Boy, Boy immediately? Right, Shark Boy, <laughs> Samson, the uh, yeah, UP, like, UP I legend. I saw Shark Samson. Boy 
with Preston on the card, and I'm kind of I'm kind of going like, let's make the drive. Let's let's go. Last year there was over three thousand people there. It was cool. Holy shit! Crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Our our uh, our our friend of the show, Tango Jones, was there. He refs at that. that. Yeah, it's Tango. Hi, Tammy. I like to address everyone when they come on. So any viewer comments that come on the screen, we'll bring them up. You know, as long as they're any not good or bad comments, bring it on. Come on. As long as they're not horrendously offensive. That we, we, get we, you do, banned. I, we do pretty good here without that. <laughs> Hi. Uh so then the next thing we got. Let me see here. Oh, you're yes, on a forklift. Today. That's tonight. That's I thought right. I had these organized. I do not. That's right now. Wait, we're right living now. in the Matrix, man. Like right now? Or did I have too much of this uh, this water? Or is it water? I had too much water. That's for goddamn sure oh, okay. right now. <laughs> we have this hey, one. Hey, we there have... we go. So this is CIW Wrestling. Um we are finally back in St. Clements Hall. We actually had a show there earlier this month. Went fantastic. We had a little over 300 people there. Um, and then this one, I'm having my first ever talk show segment uh, with a few wrestlers. Very, very pumped with this. Um, it's one thing that I've always loved to do is to talk and to, you know, just uh, party, right? And hey, Christy. Yeah, Funny little side note, CIW Wrestling, I saw them probably when I was about 13, 14 years old. Um, my dad and my mother gave me money to go buy this uh, ticket, right? Mm -hmm. And this ticket wasn't just a normal ticket. This was at my high school. And it's funny because I still have the exact poster that I made for that show in my, in my office, right? It's hanging up. Abyss, well, that's, that's cool. Abyss, Kevin Thorne, Rhino, um, Congo Kong. And it's funny, I'm wrestling him now. Um, and all these other people were at this show. And it's called Blue Devil Mania, presented to you by CIW Wrestling. So it's crazy, not even, you know, we'll call it 15 years later, and I'm doing stuff for CIW Wrestling. It's uh, amazing how things like that turn out, isn't it? Yeah. Just just the, the littlest the littlest twist and, Phil, and and fate brings you to a different spot. Phil Nitro, you know, that that's his uh that's his gimmick name. But um right now he's he's not wrestling, he's uh, promoting, but that's his company, um Phil Monahan, I'm gonna refer him to. Um you know, that guy gave me a little bit of a break um right when I first started. He uh, took me under his wing a little bit, showed me quite a bit of stuff. Um, very grateful for him. Very, um, very honored to uh, to just really be a part of CRW Wrestling. It, it feels like home. Um, it's in Toledo, and I I know that for me growing up, I didn't didn't always like feel like I fit in, you know. And mm -hmm. so now it's cool that in Toledo I'm doing this, and so some of those people that doubted me can see me really live my dream and so it's kind of like a you know i get doing moment i guess <laughs> we got we got a whole bunch of comments now hi christy hey from john we have mr party hey Rock. mr party i hey how you doing you all right you all right hi clint ethan hi mom hello Ms. how are you Ooh. mom we had, fuck it, I Xander. love you, Xander. What's up? Z Xander had a big announcement happen today, too. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, screw me. Screw all that. What? What's up with v Xander? What's so up? Zan Xander has an opportunity. Xander has a uh, heavyweight championship match against uh, Kenny Steele on the 29th at New hey, uh, uh, Students Showcase. Bro, come on, let, let, give, give him a clap. His first, his first, <laughs> first main event. Xander's been calling himself Triple H that's, ever wait, since that's the announcement. This Saturday, the no, twenty ninth, not this Saturday. Next, the, next Saturday. So this Saturday, see, so I'm doing all that. See, I'll, mm -hmm. this Saturday, I have a title opportunity as well. Ooh. Yeah, and this there is in go. Kokomo, Indiana. Where's that one? Oh my God, I can't even see. They're so small. Is it this one? There we go. No, oh, thank God. So it is a title tournament for the AACW un 
United States Championship. I'm gonna say undisputed. <laughs> uh, versus Justin Danger. So, Hell yeah! Gonna be a very fun match. Um, I, I I've seen a lot of his work. He punches really hard, but Mr. Party punches harder. I'm gonna tell you about that right now. You just now, have to write the. I'm the six right foot punch. five of straight party juice. Laid back. <laughs> Now, how much party juice do you need for your punches to double in strength? Well, if I don't pregame with my party juice, then it's just like, you know, just, just a little bit. But if I'm if I'm feeling it, right, you know, I'm like Dusty Rhodes, like bopping, I'm whopping and weaving, you know, I'm doing my thing. So it all depends on, on the dosage. If I have 69% party juice, we're good. Because mm-hmm. 69% yeah. of the time, it works every time. How you doing? It's like a little blue chew ad. <laughs> Big blue chew. Oh. The times do raise up. Uh, they, work, that's that's one work. way to do it. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, Bree. Hello, Bree. Xander's first ever main event. I oh, can't wait I'm to be so sitting there. Him, dude, so him and I were at um we're at Phil's house God, probably a year, year and a half ago, maybe even longer, training. <laughs> And man, he was doing stuff that like, and I'm I'm not coordinated as like and he is, right? So like, I can't do springboards and all that fancy crap. He can do it, and I'm I'm so proud of him. Like seeing him, you know, live his dream, and as I'm living mine, like two guys that always got bullied, and never really found their way in life until you know pro wrestling came into our life, and. Gained my confidence, gained my respect for myself, just like how he did. Um, I, I can't be more proud of him. It's and absolutely they, baffling. That, that's, that, that's not that's no get, no gimmick bullshit. That's a shoot. Like I'm so fucking proud of him. So it, it's it's baffling too because he does move that fluidly in the ring, and if you watch yeah. him outside the ring, I've watched him trip over an invisible shoelace before. So <laughs> it's so. so uh, what up, Austin? And then That's Tammy has a question for you. Yeah. Preston, do the chairs hurt when you're hit with them? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I had a, actually, I, I do a bruise actually right now because of a chair that I took. And I'll, yeah, um, wasn't even supposed to happen. Um, but, you know, they always say, oh, wrestling is fake, wrestling is scripted. Bullshit. If it's fake and scripted, then that wasn't supposed to happen. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to show my back, but literally from this shoulder blade, it's healed up a little bit. But to like the middle of my spine, it's bruised. It hurts. Well, I'm glad that you're healing up. Yeah. But yes, chair shots do hurt. Yeah, it's, it's rough. And then her next comment leads into what we're going to talk about. I can't wait to buy your action figures. Well, here's here's the fun little catch. You won't have to wait too much longer. Probably about another month and a half to two months tops. Um, but I do have the prototypes in hand. Um, Let me so give you the big without, screen here. Without any further ado. Oh, look at that. Look. Yeah. So uh, without any further ado, this is Mr. Party, Preston Riker, um, True Evolution, Series X, Line 1. Hey. This is the prototype. So with all the prototypes, the heads move, the arms move, they'll, they'll bend like this. Uh huh. And then the, the um, form will move as well. For elbow dropping action, of course. Yes. Oh, of course. So the the knees will bend. The um you have boot uh, rotation and everything. Um, between twelve and fourteen points of articulation. Here's the back. Uh, this is from when I wrestled last year at TCW Pro Wrestling. TCW, before you move on to the next part, TCW, very uh, huge place for me. Um, I've found myself from TCW. TCW is Tony Candelo Wrestling. Uh, Tony Candelo um, is a fantastic promoter, but also a great man and a also great wrestler. He helped... Um, a lot of wrestlers named like um, Edge, Chris Jericho, Don Callis, Kenny Omega, um, Rhino, um, the Bollywood Boys, so many people. Um, 
and I, I was given an opportunity to go up there and just, you know, kind of try out just to see like if my character would work. Right. Um, and he was like, I don't care about Mr. Party. Tell me who is Preston Spangler. And I'm like, Preston Spangler is a guy who never found his way in life until this business came knocking. And I, I was in a bad place a lot. I turned to alcohol, turned to other things. Um, and I, I wasn't happy for a really long time until I took this business seriously. Um, did that, got better in the gym, got better in the ring, um, loved myself again. Um, and a lot of things happened you know, from my fiance. Um, but long story short, it led me to Tony Candelo. Um, and then he's like, all right, you have a match. It's eight minutes. I said, that's fine. And, you know, um, went in there, had a good match. Um, and then he's like, all right, uh, tomorrow you're going to have another match. And so I had another match. Great. He's like, all right, uh, um, I want you back. And I was like, okay, okay. And so, excuse me. Um, oh, thank you. That, that's my Aunt Terry. Thank you. <laughs> um, Tony Candelo actually called me before the podcast. I don't remember I was talking to you before. Yeah. Um, he, he wants me back. And so I'm going back in July and in June. And we're working on dates and everything. So I'm very excited. Um, my goal is to become one of their champions in the next two years. Um, but I mean, that's really any pro wrestler's goal. If you know, if you if your goal isn't to win gold, then why the hell are you in this? Um, so that, that's very important to me. Um, but again, that's that's where that that picture came from. Um, so to piggyback off of that, I believe also A Sevens is making his uh, TCW debut this this summer too. He is, he is. Uh, before I get to Ace, uh, pull up those beautiful pictures that. I oh yeah, that's what my next thing was. Um, so we got we got the front of the package so everybody can see it um every uh tights is actually real cloth and the shirt is cloth as well um my heads are all hand painted so everything that you see right here is all hand painted and designed in ohio uh, we are the first ever company based out of ohio very important to me um so i'm just uh, very grateful for for all this Again, this is all the, the prototype stages. So, you, you know, you can see the, the, the torso isn't fully connecting. Um, we're, we're still working out some little pieces. That's why we're bumping up to about another month and a half until um, uh, sales actually happen and for pre-orders. Um, but it's it's like a WWE Elite mixed with a old Hasbro from back in the day. Um, okay. And it's something that's never been seen, never been done before. And it's very, very important to me. Um, in my brand, I have a lot of people, um, that are helping me out with this. Um, and I'm, I'm so grateful for them. Uh, a lot of people, um, I'm just giving a little shout out cream of the crop customs, elite threads, uh, print express, um, head gimmicks, my other company I own, um, custom evolution and chaos wrestling club. So I want to say thank you, uh, to all, all my partners. I can't do this without you guys, um, you know, and then most importantly, I can't do it without these fans because without the fans and actually the people wanting all this to happen, it, it wouldn't be possible. So again, thank you. So I have a question. How beneficial was it that your ring gear doesn't have sleeves when you were designing this? That had to be such a huge help, didn't it? It, it was nice because it also made me look buffer than I really am. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not in bad shape, but I'm like, Damn. All right. How you doing? <laughs> um, no, like, I, you were exactly right. Like, an elite figure mixed with the old Hasbro, which is just like, I feel, a niche that yeah. hasn't been used for action figures in so long because everyone's just worried about everything being Movement. perfect. Like, I kind of right. like the roughness of, like my, like, my dad's old fucking, like, his old Star Trek figures. Yeah. From, yeah, like, literally. the 70s exactly. and 80s. Where some parts were looser than others, you know. But in, in this photo right here, I love this photo. Um, each figure will have this photo. I just want to give a little shout out. Uh, <laughs> but you, you can see the movement and how every part can bend. Um, my fiance's favorite part about this uh, figure is my my necklace, my little chain. 
<laughs> I do like that it actually moves with your figure because I've seen it in different places, so it looks yeah. like a, a real chain. It is. It is. Um, oh, so it's all right. Uh, oh, this, sorry. Oh, no, no, you're good. Pull it back up. So each figure um, will get a rare. Okay, so every WWE, AEW, all these other figures, companies, right? Fantastic companies, fantastic figures. But there's only between one to two chases, right? So each figure of mine in my line will have a chase. Or I should be sorry, a rare. So this rare right here <clears throat> is when I was wearing my shorts and with um, the, the cup, right? And the same cup is actually behind me on this poster. This photo was taken at UPW last year. Um, very important to me. This was this was uh, when I wrestled in front of over three thousand people, so that was really cool. Bro, like the comments are already on fire. I want the first one. <laughs> there you have it. All hey, made in the USA. There you have it. So that's uh, that's that's Tony Candelo's uh, uh, good good partner. So I'm glad that you're here. My son won't have to wear his shot glass necklace to school anymore if he had this. And I was just talking her about this stuff uh, today because her son is a huge fan of mine, right? From mm -hmm. KOA. And I told her, I, I didn't want to tell her over text exactly what it was. I was like, I got something for you. Don't worry. Don't worry. I got something. It's going to be huge, okay? <laughs> going to be huge. Huge. Oh, fuck. Where's Russ when we need him? No, <laughs> no, because he'll just get it. He'll he'll just go off the deep end with that. Right. So, yeah. Obviously, I will be pre-ordering that one. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Obviously, it'll it'll go once the room is decorated. It'll go up on the wall. Well, um, I'm also so. Um, one thing I I don't think I said at all. Um, each pro, each figure um, has a set price of forty bucks. Hey. That's not bad at all. That's not at all. That is the ace. And I have my own website. Um, we're still working on some kinks. Um, mm -hmm. But the whole line is also on there for even uh, lower price. Um, you know, I'm not in this to make a lot of money. I'm not. I'm in this to help the boys out and get something out that's different. Um, mm -hmm. And that's unique. And it's something I can really believe in, you know, because I spent thousands and thousands of dollars trying to get this up and running. And this this product, my brand, I will fucking die for. See my language, but I will fucking die for. Like, this is everything to me. You um, don't have to excuse your language here. Well, my mom <laughs> and my ear. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, you can fair. do it if you want. Uh, we'll right, yeah. right. I'll hear about it tomorrow. Why the hell did you say this shit? <laughs> <laughs> no so, man like because it's like because when you're when you're in something you love like especially you i see you're passionate about two things uh matt hardy and action figures uh oh yeah like, all these right here all custom matt hardy i'm call me a mark baby because i am a mark for matt hardy that's, <laughs> that's my goal is to get him part of this say it bud. um it's my mom um before i say the next person mm -hmm. i have my own line of t-shirts coming out this is the front this is the back. It's my slogan, right? These shirts and also plenty other shirts you can get from Face Kicked Apparel. Hit up uh, Sean Stockmeyer on Facebook. Um, fantastic guy. He's my best friend. Um, he's actually going to be the best man at my wedding. Um, and he, yeah, fantastic work. Very fast. You know, he communicates good shit. So, and yeah, that's my website. Thank you for, for, uh, if you are watching on YouTube, it'll be linked in the bio below. So you don't have to type all of that out. And, uh, you know, without any further ado, I present to you. <laughs> your turn. <by> a mark. <laughs> we fucking are. Best man in the world. Hell I'm yeah, excited to see you us. tomorrow, Sean. Hey, Sean, guess what? There you are. <laughs> oh, so this is Ace Evans, and he is a little bit shorter, but I made sure everything is all to accurate size. <laughs> <laughs> so there's wrist gauntlets. All of his pants are actual cloth. His shirts are cloth. Um, you, you know, you, the the photos you'll see in a second will 
explain more. Uh, this is probably my favorite back card that I have in my line. Um, the A7's autograph up here. Um, you know, this, this this photo right here. This was actually when he um, wrestled, uh, what was it? Oh, Eddie Dillon. And yeah, you are an action figure, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this right this right here, I'm so used to it backwards, but this right here is actual uh, code on every figure um, to, right to the Facebook. Um, I wasn't actually planning on getting a website, which is kind of weird, but I was like, you know what? I don't look professional. I'll pay the extra money. Mm -hmm. So without any further ado, look at these beautiful pictures. Why did you make... I'll just bring this comment on with this photo. Is this the... <laughs> so I have a question then. If, if, the, if there's 25 rare figures, correct? Yes. Um, um, does... We all have 25. He'll have yes. 25. And, yeah. <clears throat> does, does Aces come with a tag rope? Uh, well, I mean, I'm not saying it does, and I'm not saying it doesn't. But, oh, I got something else to show you, too, for his. But we'll do it after this part. Okay. I love it because, you know, that same expression is the exact same expression that he, you know, gave me when I liked eggs. I, I also <laughs> like it. I also like that because these are hand-painted, as he gets older, the beard gets grayer. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, I mean... I think it's realistic as all hell. We are still working out the kinks on the tattoos. Um, there, you know, there's a few kinks, but again, right. we're still in prototype stage. But you know, I want to bring it to you guys that you know this thing is real. It's happening. It's happening freaking quick. And you know, <laughs> I can already see him screaming at me. Yeah, he is. Well, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> we're sorry for the audio only listeners here but we really are a visual podcast <laughs> but like so like look at that photo right there mm -hmm. you can see the, the the cyn logo on his boots um his tights are all cloth the shirts are all cloth um the beard is not cloth uh but he does have wrist gauntlets on this one. Um, we're still working out some kinks on to uh, actually get that to be um, developed better because it, it wasn't fully there. Um, I do yes, the Jinko jeans. Really What's that one? Yes, the Jinko jeans. Yeah. See, they are back in style. No, they're great. They're great. I, I attempted to try to make it look like they got tucked into his boots. But, I just love the yeah, clutch I'm... your nuts logo on the side of them. Zodiac Killer made these tights, and they're they're incredible. Um, very very good wrestler, very good um, designer. You want to give him a little cheap pop and a little shout out? Fucking and going for a test out. big boot here. Hold on a second. Hold on. So, okay, so, uh, medium sized boot. Um, <laughs> so here's my question though. Yeah. Um, if we get the medium sized tech decks, will Ace fit on the medium sized tech deck? Because I am, I, I did like normally I'm not one that'll get like action figures and open them, but for some reason his face just screams that I need to put him in the middle of doing like a kickflip. Yeah, <laughs> or so just an ollie. I'm, I'm still working out the sizing because I'm trying to find something that will fit the AEW base and the WWE base, WWE base and the. But they're all different sizes. So I'm trying to find out and work on, like, the height difference, right? So, like, um, I've seen that the WWE base, it's like a, it's a flat piece, right? But the peg sticks up a little bit. The AW1 sticks up more. Not to make it look like it up, right? Um, so, but but I, I can't do any of this work without my business partner and this whole thing. Um, his name is Terrell. Fantastic guy. Um if it wasn't for him, this would not be possible. Him and I have been um, crunching this out prototype after prototype. This is probably like our 17th prototype at least. And God damn. of all, all of these figures I'm going to show you tonight, um, it has been a fucking headache, but it has brought me here and I am so proud. 
So thank you, Terrell. I really can't do this without you, bro. Um, not to shoot. (laughs) (laughs) We're all about shooting from the hip here. I'm shooting from the hip, brother. (laughs) So, so then there we go. We have, uh, do you want to bring on, do you want to save the rare ones for the end or do you want to bring them on? Actually, hold on. I got something else I want to show you. So with the first 10 of every action figure, I'm Mm -hmm. throwing in a free gift. The first 10 lines, um, we'll get a free gift, right? Mm -hmm. The free gift for his, um, because you've seen his other shirt, his new shirt. Yeah. Um, This is his other shirt. There we go. This is the Ace Evans other shirt that he gets. Oh, shit. And there's only 10 of them. There will only be 10 ever made. But it's a free gift from me to you. And then this is his Chase shirt. Um, before I pull this the picture or this up, pull a picture of, of his Chase, please. So oh, this God. is... Biker Daddy. Biker Daddy, you know. I'm coming to get your hard boiled eggs because I'm the fucking, <laughs> <laughs> but this is his, uh, his chase shirt. Oh, that's awesome. The Exodus pro with the CYN. So, um, and he, he isn't, he hasn't seen that yet. So there you go. Buddy. He has now. He has now. Red solo cup, red solo. This is cup. my chase shirt. I didn't show that earlier, but it's a uh, red solo cup party. Nice. Yeah, Biker Daddy. I've been calling Ace that since he cracked his head open in front of me. Sure, that never saw the light of day. Damn. Yeah. yeah. So we ha- So there we have it. There is going to be the Ace Evans yep. figurine. Very pumped on that one. Very, very happy. Yes. Next. Ready for the next one? Mm-hmm. He's damn near seven foot tall. He's damn near 300 pounds. And uh, he's a big guy. I'm actually wrestling him at KOA. This is Congo Kong. Oh, God damn. That is way taller than the Sean figure. The, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's uh, Good Lord. So it, it, it does fit the packaging as well. Um, my, the packaging is more old school, you know, it's not like a, um, AEW, right? No, it's, it's kind of like a Mika or Amigo. It's kind of like an old Amigo figure. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not boxy like the elite, by the way, I do sell elite stuff. So if you want some figures and hit me up, I got you on the low, like he'll never find crap this cheap. I promise you. I'm (laughs) Uh, but anyways, the Congo Kong, um, yep. There you go. Ryan from the gym, Congo Kong. Uh, one figure that I've always wanted was this one, and it was, and it was because of I saw him at my high school. Um, mm-hmm. And here's the back. This is when he wrestled in Impact Wrestling. Um, he had huge feuds with like Brian Cage, um, Abyss, um, a lot of other great wrestlers as well. He was a part of like the uh, the big uh, meat slap and rise of 2017. Yeah. Um, his manager was Chelsea Green. Mm-hmm. So the hot mess. Um, the hot mess. Very, very pumped to have him part of my line. Uh very grateful to uh also have him. Um and then you can put those beautiful photos up next. There we go. It's just an old school feel. Like like as you see I showed you before we started. I collect these goddamn figures. Yeah. But like it's these all hand ones, painted. that that face is all hand painted. There is a small decal over it, but then I hand paints everything else. And then that shows the movement on the torso for Kong. Um, you know, he does go all the way around, <laughs> um, but I just want to show some movement. Uh, very cool. So, and also one thing I I didn't take pictures of, and I sh- probably should have. My knee pads you'll never seen in a pro wrestling action figure before. All my knee pads are sculpted, designed, and have never been seen the light of the day from anybody else. Nice. And, and my, knee, or, uh, my arm pads, too. I got those as well. <laughs> the tattoo design on him is actually pretty damn accurate. The, no, hard that was. I had to hand paint that. We, me and Terrell 
we got a decal. We put it on. It it worked all right for the outline, but mm -hmm. we were trying to crunch time for the prototypes to get done. And so I didn't start hand painting everything else. But I really appreciate that. Looks like we have a we have a little bit of lore here in the comment section. First off, I just want to say, hey, thank you, Tommy. I appreciate it. Um, but uh, Mr. Bailey is here in the comment section. Uh, hey, talking about Tom Bailey? No, no, I don't know. Mr. Bailey, Tom's dad. So Congo and I played football together at SVSU, and then last week he slapped the hell out of my son. Yeah. <laughs> he, he sure did. It was a horror slam. That was a good match. It was. So he, he has articulation. Uh, it, it, you know, he gets his leg up there, though. <laughs> well, he's also a bigger guy, so it's more accurate. Like, he's and not going to. He gonna... can still hit Sean with that top rope move. Absolutely, he can. <laughs> he can still hit Sean with a big boot. Yeah. I'm just sorry. Like, the, the leg does go up more. I just, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Hold on. We got a bunch of comments. Jimmy Jacobs. I love meat slapping. I bet you do, Ryan. <laughs> Meaty seven foot of seven meat. Foot of meat. <laughs> and then, yeah, that was the first thing that Bailey, uh, uh, Josh Bailey told me when we showed up was just like, yeah, I played football with him. And like literally, I was out in the parking lot talking to Tom and his mom, and then she was just like, "Yeah, he played football with Congo." That's that's crazy. And then we have the which one is it here? The rare for him. Yep. So this one right here is exact. So there was ramblings, or I should say, rumblings of a action for the real life um, video game coming out. Right. It mm -hmm. looked just identical to like the same quality as WWE. Um, I forget who made it, um, but this is the exact attire from that video game. Uh, this is my favorite attire from Congo Kong. Um, and I present to you my rare. And with Kong, um, you've seen his uh, flap already. And this mm -hmm. is his free gift for the 10th first time people who buy his figure it is the gold Kong logo. Oh, that's fucking rad. That's really cool. So you're really making these figures not to like they can stay in the packaging, but like you're really making these yeah. to not stay in them. Yeah, like I want you to <laughs> beat my ass with the action figure in <laughs> real life, but it can happen in action figure world. Okay, okay, this comment is gonna oh, set I me up. That game too, for real. Uh, this comment's gonna set me. Virtual reality. That's what it's called. Virtual reality. I I, I stand. I I'll die on the statement that Kurt Angle on Percocet. Is the greatest professional wrestler to ever exist. Do you, do you think he was on perks when he did that uh, senton at TNA? Like, there is no question in my mind that motherfucker wasn't on perks. Right. That motherfucker ju jumped 37,000 feet. It, dude, he, he got so high. It wasn't Abyss on that table? No, Abyss was like just standing. Yeah, it was Abyss on the table or yeah. Abyss was standing there. And he cleared easy 20 feet to get to him. <laughs> it, was, it, it was standing there because he did the senton. <laughs> it up and like you know mm -hmm. his, his gimmick yeah, yeah. Kurt, 2009 kurt angle is the best professional wrestler to ever exist my dream match if we can talk is kurt angle on percocet versus Shawn michaels on cocaine <laughs> <laughs> that is my dream match <laughs> because their match at wrestlemania 21 is in like my top five favorite matches nobody would have went over Nobody. It would have gone to a 60-minute time limit draw, and neither of them would have stopped. Earl Hebner would have been like, all right, boys, I'm fucking done. <laughs> and they would We're have gone it. Yeah. Midway through the <laughs> midway through the match, he swaps out with he swaps out with Brian. And they just keep going. JR is oh, the commentary. God damn! Flower knocker. Oh man. What is your dream match? Not for you, but to watch. For like me or you, you asked one me? that you want to see, like be in or as a fan watch, both. as a fan watch. You can give us both if you have oh, them. or yeah. both. Well, yeah. I have two dream matches. I, oh, I I had three. I've already wrestled Kong Kong once, mm -hmm. and my other dream match is Russell Ace. It's gonna happen. Um, so any any promoter listening out there, fucking book it. Yeah, you can <laughs> fucking book it. Um, I mean, I'll do that shit for free. I don't care. I don't know fucking pay. I'm beating the ass. Uh, <laughs> it's either Russell Matt Hardy. I mean, which is uh, a, 
Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Or this is controversial as hell. Kevin Thorne. Bro, my undying love for Kevin Thorne and his Everybody misunderstood. Everybody on him, and it's horrible. I him as Mordecai, fucking gold. We just happened. became best friends. F- hold on, fuck you, Ethan. We just became best friends. Yeah. So you know what? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Remember how earlier I was explaining about the show, right? So this is a vis. This uh, mm-hmm. a vis signed it right here, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin Thorne. Um, and I, oh, so go a little personal. So I'm a Christian, right? Mm-hmm. It would, you wouldn't believe it because I'm the party guy, but you know, it, it's a character. I mean, I used to love that character a lot heavier than I do now, but I'm a Christian. Kevin Thorne's a Christian, and we we really clicked on that and it brought me to a side of like i could do this one day because i you know, i'm a christian you know he was like this scary fucking dude right and if if that guy can do it and you know had like a hard harder upbringing but like stay true to himself then i could do it so met him uh doink the clown uh, which was um, i forget who it was but it wasn't doink uh, the real Rosie. Mm-hmm. Um, I know my mom's in the the chat, so she's seen this and she remembers what I'm talking about. Um, uh, who else is on here? Um, Malice. Malice was here. Oh shit! You guys, you guys know Malice, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? Uh, Ro- Rody Hogan. Ro- Roddy Hogan. He's a little fan. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah, know yeah, Roddy. Yeah, yeah. Paul Bearer, he was uh, Kevin Thorne and uh, Phil Phil Nitro and Malice's tag tag partner. Uh, but mm-hmm. Paul Bearer was was their manager. I'm sorry, it was a it was a six way. We have a request. Show them your drink. You don't like the clouds. Sean or not Sean Ryan? I don't know. Where's Ned? I think that's it. Don't like the clown. God damn. Uh, Everyone's on that bitch. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Doink. It's right there. I'm I'm slow. Right there. <laughs> it just says doink. Yeah. Um, but no, crazy. You know, like, I mean, I met Rhino and um, I met Crimson, um, mm-hmm. CK3. Uh, that, that was awesome. He, great guy. Um, you know, very, very, uh, very cool. We got this comment from Jeremiah. Hey, Jeremiah. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Clint and Ethan are okay. I, I get it. If I wasn't booked this weekend, I would totally come up to your show just to hang out. <clears throat> Good, because uh, I'm going to be there doing my first uh, I know. I'm, I'm thing for a while. Uh, it's going to be cute. It's going to be fabulous. I promise now, like everyone. Like this cute? Like Jeremiah? Oh, it, or, or like this cute? <laughs> um, more like this cute. Oh, hey. <laughs> I'm working on my fanography here. Yeah. Got to get ready for punchlines. So that was my, uh, as a wrestler dream match, my favorite sh- shit to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, any broken Matt Hardy stuff um, or Santino Morilla. That stuff, it's not just comical, but it's it's so good. And it didn't do shit in the ring at all. Mm-hmm. It was just they're having fun, you know? Like, yeah. everyone now is so fucking worried about, oh, I gotta do this, and we remember all these spots. Fuck all that, dude. Just have fun. So, right? did you, how did you feel about the Johnny Knoxville, uh, Sami Zayn match then? You had to love that. Yeah, the main dude, match. I fucking nutted. Sorry, Auntie. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the best match in WrestleMania history. So, is me, Gio Bronco, Xander, and a guy named Russ, we're, we left Michigan to go up that year to to uh, Texas. This happened in Texas. And we drove from uh, Michigan to Texas to go to an indie show. Remember, we, we talked about this on that your last podcast with Xander. Remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that match was happening. And I wanted to go, but we had to go to Peter. And uh, that was in – Peter's show was in Indiana. So we went from Texas to Indiana, and that was a fucking hard weekend. Um, 
but oh my, it was gold. It was it was gold, and everyone's like, oh well, you know, it doesn't make sense. Okay, there's a place on the card for everything. Santino Morella didn't have to fucking win. He's a millionaire. No, right? he never had to win. He was he just a, fun. A character. He had a fucking character. I hate when I see these wrestlers. They're fucking big, massive dudes with egos out of their fucking ass. You know, they're you know, this dicks, right? But there's a lot of great people, but there's also a lot of dicks. Um, I might get heat for that, but blow me. So, um, it's just they're not having. It's like they're not having fun. It's like they're taking so too serious. You know, like, um, I won't, and I'm not gonna say the person, but like. Him and I will talk, and he's like, I just am finally having fun for the first time in a long time. <clears throat> man, I'm get, man, I'm getting teared on just talking about him, right? But it's like, for so long, I was so worried that, like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm not a big guy. I'm 6'5", but I don't fucking have the size. You know, I, I hit the gym as much as I possibly can. I try to eat as much as I can. I don't have that size. Am I? Is it going to work, right? <clears throat> so... I had this ego for so long that like, I had to work. I was in my head so fucking much. And then you just, I, Mr. Party came a thing, right? And I was like, I was so happy. Um, I was like this face paint demon fucking thing. And this happened. And I was like, I can have fun. I don't have to worry about everything. I can give you a scoop slam. I can actually make a body slam mean something. You know, not just a fucking move to go into the next move. I can make it mean something. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I feel like that's what it's wrestling is missing that. Or it, it, it's not even that it's missing. I should, I'm sorry. Fuck that. We need we need to have characters like that. You know, not every person can be an EC3. Not every person can be, you know, a Congo Kong, right? Mm -hmm. Some people need to be fucking different. That variety in a in a match uh, show is is huge, you know. They always say, "Oh, if you're match number three, if you're right after intermission, it's a popcorn match." Great, throw me in that fucking popcorn match because it's still an opportunity, and I'm gonna make you fucking watch me. It's like I like to go back. Like Ethan and I will bring match up all the time. Uh, at the end of Revolution 2020, there was the best tag match to have ever happened on that show. Is is that the Lucha Brothers? No, it's the uh, Kenny Omega and Hangman versus the Young Bucks match. That was that was gold because uh, the story behind that that they've never been pinned by the Young Bucks and the, the whole six month story that they had it's great. But it's what was great. the match? What match everyone was talking about the next night was Orange Cassidy versus Pac because yep. it was something so different. Like you said, there was a guy who he didn't have to be a good wrestler. He just went in there nope. and was just great character. He did a funny character work. It's one of the best comedy matches to ever take place on a pay per view. And, you and have it to was the guy. The fun yeah. part of wrestling is learning to understand who he is. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, because like when Cassidy would nonchalant and then he would show up to wrestle, you were like, "Oh shit, this guy can fucking go." The he, this, right. whoever Pac is, is over more over as a dangerous threat because Cassidy at this point is having to actually try to wrestle. Yeah. It's it's yeah. just different. Like, you saw Santino Morella. Santino Morella paved the way for people like R-Truth to be who he is right now, for people like Orange Cassidy to be where they are right now, to be funny mm -hmm. while also being great wrestlers. R-Truth right now is being called to win the world championship. Oh, dude, and the dude isn't doing anything. He's going to fucking WrestleMania right now. It's a comedy act. You kidding me? His, I'll, his I'll tell you my dream. I'll tell you my dream off camera for WrestleMania because I don't want to spoil any of our WrestleMania predictions for okay. in two weeks. So it is two weeks away. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, you're fine. So one, I know, I know who you're talking about. By the way, if you follow yeah. them on any kind of social media, the person that's bringing tears to your eyes, they're very open about it. They're very open about how they've transformed their life, how they've moved things on. We've talked about the person already here tonight. However, we talk about comedy matches, and not that it's ever going to happen, but that guy right there that just got popped up on the bottom of the screen, he and I have an idea for a seatbelt match, and it doesn't make sense because we both wear seatbelts to, to buckle our pants in, and I don't have the one on, but I have Bro. a Batman one. I have my, my Deadpool one Where's downstairs. Where the fuck you get that at? 
Hot years topic ago in 2010. It, exactly. I need so that. that's a shoot. I need it. I'm so, okay. I, so I'm robbing you the next time I see you, bro. So the, my my actual this will tie into you a little bit. My Deadpool belt came from Fallen Timbers in Toledo. Um, Ooh, okay. so that it's. So that's where I got that. But I noticed that Eddie wears one on his ring gear. And now I'm like, well, now we have to battle. Does because, he? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the Deadpool one. It says Chimichanga's on it. So Deadpool? I was like, now we have to battle. And because it's pro wrestling, it can be over ever and nothing except a freaking belt. But not a big belt, one that actually holds up your pants. Right. The belt. <laughs> yeah. We're fighting over who gets to wear the belt. Yeah, it's who gets to wear the Deadpool belt when they wrestle. Right. Uh, Eddie Dillon, Preston talked about your match with Sean. I did. I marked was out for it. We got oh, off the track. one from this past weekend. Yeah. Or the one? Yeah. The, no, I'm sorry. It was that uh, the PPW one. PPW. Yeah. Okay. Because they wrestled each other this past they weekend did. too. It was in Chicago, Illinois, and I'm. I, it was him, Sean Porter, um, Tano, um, from CRW. Um, or Mark Anthony, <laughs> uh, but don't don't know if I'm allowed to say that or not. But fucking sue me. Um, and then Sean. Well, if you'd ask some people, people don't watch this show, so you're probably fine to say that. It's but okay. if you ask other people, it's, it's a weird because like people already try to cancel me a few times, and I guess maybe even after this, I might get canceled because you know it's not just over. Uh... <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. At, at the end of the day, the people that are watching. <laughs> I missed it. I'll watch this back. Well, because if you're watching on Facebook, as we know a lot of people are right now, please uh, scan that QR code right next to my face. It'll take you to our right YouTube channel. Nope, subscribe, right where you can find all the great Min Michigan independent wrestlers uh, wrestling around other promotions. Because I just show up like a dickhead with a camera and record them and put them on our channel for profit. It also, also. You can stop the video if you go back and maybe scan the QR code that's on the back of one of the TWE boxes. I even, I got a better idea. <laughs> How about I show you the next figure and then they can scan it then? I like yeah. that. I present to you. <clears throat> Hold on. Eddie said, don't tell men what to do. I know what he meant, <laughs> but I'm just glad that it. <laughs> I love Eddie. Eddie, Fuck all of you. Eddie was there when I had those eggs, right? And on the way home, I had to get more eggs. And I I forgot the fucking wrapper in Sean's car. And he's like, you're never eating eggs in my car again. <laughs> it was what Are you Abe Sapien from Hellboy? Hey, so Sean Porter dro drove me back to his house because um, I had church that Sunday. And I was like so exhausted, right? And so... I'm, fucking, crying. I'm at church and Sean texts me, What the fuck? Don't leave these back in my car. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, What are you talking about? Like, I thought you're ripping me, right? And he sends me a picture and it's a white bag from the gas station, the little wrapper of where the hard boiled eggs were. It says two in the juice. I'm like, Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll never forget that. So while we have Eddie, while we have before we get to the next figure, yeah, we have both we have Sean and Eddie in the chat, and uh, Ethan has this bad habit of telling people he's going to be at shows and then doesn't show up. Huh? <laughs> really? Because he's it's an not asshole. like I it's not like I'm booked and then I don't show up. Hey, so, I'm trying to get stickers for you for how long? <laughs> so I got a message from Eddie Dillon and Ace Evans for Ethan this time around when he didn't oh. show up. Uh, hey, Ethan, uh, I have a friend here who has a message for you. I show up and you're not even here, man. Fuck you. And yeah, you're short. Fuck you. And you're short. And your name. <laughs> I never that got was that horse slam. I never caught the and your name part. You didn't catch that? No, because it was loud as shit in there. That's great. Oh, that was pretty funny. Okay, okay let's was... get to the figures. Let's get to the figures. This is good. Go so, ahead. Bring up the next one. Mine. We talked about Sean, well, Ace Evans, and we talked about my trainer, Kongo Kong. Mm -hmm. By the way, cheap plug. 
if anyone's looking to be trained to become a professional wrestler or develop more skills, hit up Congo Kong's Academy. Um, we are in Bluffton, Indiana, um, and we have different classes for different levels. Um, and it is a honor to be there. I've learned a lot. And, yeah, a little cheap plug. It's uh, in Bluffton, Indiana, which is in Indiana, which is on Earth, which is in Indiana. We, exactly. I was actually supposed to be there today, too. So if any of the guys are watching, you know what I'm at. Anyways, this other guy was formerly known as Damian Sandow from the WWE. Um, he's traveled the world. You know, he went to T well, it was Impact Wrestling and then Global Force Wrestling. And then it was TNA Wrestling. And then went back to Global Force. All that stuff. And now he has a new home. His home is called, or his home, I'm sorry, is called the NWA. I bring to you the man himself, Aaron Stevens. So this is his figure. You can see the shirt. It's really hard. The shirt is actual cloth mm -hmm. and the jacket and the pants. Um, these are a one-on-one -on -one first ever molded uh, boot shoes. Um, they're actual dress shoes. Um, same articulation, same everything else. Here is a picture from when he uh, managed some people in the NWA. I believe, actually, right now, they are the current tag team champions in the NWA. Okay. Um, he doesn't wrestle as often, but um, he did have a match, I want to say, about a year ago. Um, fantastic match. I've learned so much. I mean, that, that's another guy I study, you know, Sandow. Um Speaking of comedy spots, what a great guy. The Mizdow run, the entire thing of exactly. it. Exactly. It, exactly. It, it's it's great comedy, but it was still getting the point across. Um, I'm just going to ramble on a little bit as you know, the, the pictures come up. Um, mm -hmm. With uh, with that being said, like I, I did a preface, right, with um, him, EC3, and a few guys over at Exodus Pro. Um and I was so nervous, right? Um, I, I explained, like, I was so overwhelmed and I didn't know if I could really just be me. And he's like, give me a promo. And I gave him a promo. And he's like, why the hell were you nervous? He's like, you're loud. And he's like, that's great. And then there was some shit I had to work on, and I'm very proud of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I do want to say, um, again, everything's hand-painted. Yeah. Um, these are just the prototypes. But um, I, I'm in love with this figure. Like... The, the head sculpt turned out amazing. So head gimmicks, if you guys ever do custom action figures, definitely hit up head gimmicks. Like that photo right there looks just like Sandow. Mm -hmm. Aaron Stevens, I'm sorry. No, Anyways, you're good. I'm doing the uh, preface and, you know, he pulls me aside and asks me a question and I give him an answer. Um, I, I, it's a question I can't really say on here. So <laughs> you're I good. give him an answer. And That's what Forklift After Dark is for. Exactly. And then, he, then he got the gimmick that he needed. If you know what I'm saying, how you doing? Um, he got the gimmick, right? And so, <laughs> um, at the NWA show, he he needed something else. He needed some help. And I gave him some help. Um, and I was like, "Listen, what uh, what can we do? Thank you, Ryan. That, that means a lot. Um, we worked out really hard in this head sculpt. Um, like, what can we do to get you part of this line? And I, I had a one-on-one -on -one prototype of EC3. Everyone knows EC3 is in the line. I'll show you in a little bit. But anyways, I had the one-on-one -on -one prototype for EC3. And Sam, I was like, whatever I got to do, I want I want to be part of it. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm in. I'll spend the money. I'll do whatever. I, I'll get you to be a part of this. So, you know, handshake agreement. Um, I, I, I showed those uh, photos to him yesterday. And, you know, he's very happy, very happy. And, and that means a lot. Actually, I was talking to EC3 earlier today when I was at work. Um, we were in a meeting, uh, a student meeting. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to EC3, and he was very pleased with his figure and how it turned out. Um, Looks great. Like, I know you keep going on, like, these are hand-painted. You're good. Like, we understand that stuff. Like, yeah. as most people watching this, like, figure collectors, we understand that there's prototypes and everything. Yeah. I'm just hoping I get one of the rare ones. That's oh, you I'm will. For the, the price, the price. So again, the base model is forty bucks. Um, the rares, 
will be up in price. Nothing. I don't believe it's crazy. Um, it's it's there's more cloth, there's more goods coming with it. So you know, it's an exclusive. Exactly. So you're gonna be paying that premium price. It's, it's more of a premium. You know, it's a variant, but it's it's a premium variant. Um, that one is. I'm trying to get lower, but it's gonna be between sixty five and seventy. Okay. Um, but I mean, it, again, um, I I really believe in this line. I believe it's gonna be worth it. Um, you know, like the head sculpts, you know, Ryan, Sean, Eddie, everyone keeps saying like they're realistic. They are. Um, maybe, maybe the photos don't don't capture enough and I might have to get some better photos. But the quality and the the fine little details that we me and my team have, have done, it's it's remarkable. And actually give me one second, let me show you something. Okay. Um so my, my toilet broke i'm sorry no nope, you're good so this is just for example the process of how one of these heads are done right um this is stuff i usually don't show anybody so went through one guy before um and these heads did not turn out good spent a lot of money with this guy very disappointed but i got to see what it could look like right i was like all right and then you get another guy bad and then um he didn't want to send me the file so i had my business partner terrell print it and it was it was just wasn't printable they kept printing and it's it wasn't it wasn't good so i hit up head gimmicks on instagram um they've done fantastic work for a lot of um other independent um this custom people, but never a whole line, right? And I showed them my idea, my brand. I love the hat. Is that a hat anywhere? It is a hat. I do um, have that photo you sent me earlier of the prototype with the head if you want me to pop it up. Um, do I? So I figured I should get mine. So here is the EC3 head. It come and this one came out. This where is this camera at? There we go. Ah! Right there. That came out great. That came out great. <clears throat> and I was I was really pleased with it. And I was like, all right. And then the Congo Kong head. Oh yeah. <clears throat> and Tell then, that's Congo. Here is the Aaron Stevens. That's really good. So I was very pleased with it. I'm like, all right, I don't care the price. Let me know. <laughs> and so, like, I, I paid him a lot of money to make these head sculpts, and then I owned the file and everything. Now, that's a head. <laughs> that's a head. Um, no, it was this photo you sent me. Yes, yes. That was the first prototype one of uh, the head. Um, very, very pleased with it. Um, the the boots, that, that's, that figure is what I just showed you guys, but that was still prototype color. That is all dipped color. Um, so, I mean, it's just, it's a, a very cool experience. Like, let me see if I can find it. I have so many bags of t-shirts to give away for free. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't actually have it. But I was going to show you like the, the cloth. Like I went through a few different people who make cloth goods for tights. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a good quality. But I also wanted the person to communicate with me. Like if they had a problem that they needed a different resize. Um, you know, I wanted to have have that option to have a good open communication. Um, and, and produce results. Not just pay someone and, you know, just, okay, you're a sponsor. Like we're partners, right? Mm -hmm. Not actually be that. Like I wanted, I wanted to run this how I would want to be treated and how I would want my business to be ran. So I'm fucking running my own business, you know. Fuck yeah. But, uh, again, I, I believe in this too damn much. You see, here's the thing: is that when you talk about it, you sound very excited and you're very happy yeah. about it, which is what is like. I just had to approach my boss and be like, yo, man, our production thing is actually taking off and I'm going to need to open on weekdays, on weekends and shit like yeah. that. And he was just like, dude, just seeing you, like how happy you sound about it. 
makes me know this is going to be a good thing and a successful right. thing for you. Because if you believe in it and you're excited about it and you're happy about it, other people are going to be excited. And happy about it. Yeah, because if, if you don't, then why why would you two or anyone else believe in something if I can't, you know, believe in it? And, yeah. I, and I, didn't, I didn't take, for example, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this. Two, two people offered me a lot of money to mm-hmm. put down to help out. I said no. And they said and they said that's stupid. It, it, it probably won't work because you didn't take the money. I said, all right, that's fine. And the reason I'm not taking the money is because if I can't put my own money up and if I can't believe in it, then no one else will. So you know if it wasn't for my amazing fiance, then I then th- then this would just be a like an idea, a dream. She's been my backbone. She's my fucking best friend. Like if God forbid it, this doesn't work, you know, a, a success, then, you know, so be it. Because this time right now, being on this podcast, being on this moment, being with the people I have in my life right now, that's a fucking success. Um, you, you guys give me a platform tonight to live my dream. And that's something that, um, this, this is almost better than winning a title. You guys, you guys gave me this opportunity and it, it just, it's so, fuck it. Words can't describe how I feel. I'm just, I'm humble. I'm, I'm just so, um, thank you. Bro, I, I we have, say, oh, we've spent our whole life collecting figures. <clears throat> like we bought figures. We never thought in our lives someone would want to come on and debut an action figure line. So this is something that's like a dream for us too. Like this for is, yourself. We know I, these have ESPN. I have ESPN. I could see this. Like we're fucking, we're sitting here going like that. I, I know you. I've hung out with you. I've, right. I've fucking just hung out with Ace last week. These are right. people I know. This is more exciting to me than fucking when AEW drops new figures. Like you and I were talking about that punk ROH figure before the show. And I'm more excited I, about those than I am anything that they're putting out right I now. I do have it for sale if anyone needs it. <laughs> um, and, and while we're at it, you're mine for business. That. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, there you go to lighten the mood there for you. Best head and re- best head game in wrestling. <laughs> Preston is. Riker. I'm so green that I give head. <laughs> yeah. Wait for that one to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> it is it. already a short on our page. <laughs> that AI works wonders. Um <laughs> exactly. I, I do so. I've followed your story for a while now, and I and I hope that this isn't going too far. Um, I just wanted to say that, like, from what I've from what I've seen of your work that you've done here, everything, all the effort that you put in, I feel like that. Um, I know you lost a family member relatively recently. My, my um, dad uh, died last year, and I became a bad alcoholic. I think he would be proud of where you're at today. You son of a bitch, Ethan. <laughs> you son of a I didn't mean I didn't mean to do that, no, but like okay. I, I just seen I seen the the how much how much time, effort, things like that you put in, um, you know, with your dad. Me a pussy, and, you fucking internet and, no, no, <laughs> it's no, I think it's amazing because I also have watched you um as, as somebody who also kind of like goes off the wagon and things like that, and I've struggled with alcoholism in the past and, yeah, and whatnot. Same. I mean, I, um, I, I've got nothing to hide. Fuck it. Uh, I said I wasn't going to say it earlier, and I'm going to cut you off. You know, there's people like me. I've tried to commit suicide. I've it failed. Right? I was in a psych ward. And it was it was it was one of the worst times of my life. My worst time of my life was losing my dad. He was my best friend. <clears throat> but if I didn't do that, if I didn't, if I wasn't consuming myself with drinking. Um, going to bars every night, spending my my all my paycheck on alcohol, um, telling people, "Oh, I'm getting better," but I'm really not, and not communicating how I feel. None of this would be fucking possible. Um, if it wasn't, yep. <laughs> if it wasn't for my, you know, my actual, <laughs> not not just uh, the people in the wrestling business, but if it wasn't for my actual family, if it wasn't for Again, I'm going to say it again. T- tonight, um, people that, you know, believe in me, believe in believe in just what I can do, then 
nothing, none of this bullshit would be possible. You know, I, I live a fucking fantasy. I'm, I'm Mr. Party. I entertain kids. The kids come up fucking get autographs. They want a fucking red solo cup to get autographed. And that, that, that's all I've ever wanted, right? Mm-hmm. And it, it showed me where I was at my lowest to like getting up to uh, in a better area, dropping ev- and losing everything again, going into debt, going into all this shit for nothing. At the time, I'm like, what, what the hell? My, my dad would always say in due time, things will, you know, will, uh, will work out. Things will get better. I'm like, no, it won't. <laughs> like, you fucking kidding me? Like, Graduate high school homeless. <laughs> no, no, won't. Um, shit was it was hard, right? It was a little harder for me than other people. But I don't care about even less the story besides mine because I'm being selfish right now. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's here. Well, listen, we don't do this for, very much like like you're in this spot. We don't do this for our own gain. Like the reason that we've always done this channel and Clint and I have talked about this before, we're going to sit around and we're going to talk about this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, if it's a recap yeah. of the weekly wrestling, whatever it is, we're going to do that anyway. We're just doing it in front of a camera. What you see is what you get. This is what you would get. If you hang out with us, we're not exactly. putting something on. So if our platform that we've, that we've got to this point it helps elevate other people in the industry and helps people achieve their dreams. That's the best thing that we can give back to it. This is not monetized. This right. is not, we're, we're just here on a Thursday night because we're truly interested in what you have, what you're bringing to the table. And we want to, from our side, we want to see it a, because we like cool shit. Um, and B, because like, if this is an opportunity to help you get somewhere and, and all it takes is one person to see it, that's all. That's the most we could possibly ask. I, I, I agree. Um, it's, uh, it's, re- it's really, it's, it's weird. It's a weird feeling. Cause you know, like, when, when you're like always an outsider, like trying to like always look in that, that window always feels super cold. And, you, and it's like, every time you feel like you're hitting it, no matter how hard you're hitting it, no one can hear you. Right. Um, but your platform people can hear. Um, so speaking of let's, platforms, let's get these emotional comments out of the way and then uh, move on to uh, the last figure. I expect <laughs> to be in the 20 series. God damn it. Ace. Uh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're a visual podcast. I'm, I can't read these out. I've, I've been crying a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, thank you, thank you for liking our video. I and uh, I the most the most emotion the most emotional comment can confirm best. <laughs> All right. Uh, it, before I forget, be better if you actually had eggs for me. Before I forget, I forgot the rare photo of there Aaron you go. Stevens. This this is one of my favorite ones, right? So, um, a few years ago. Uh, we did lose a wrestler. Um, his name was Question Mark. He was part of the NWA. Um, Aaron Stevens was his manager and tag team partner. And this photo is actually when he tagged up with Question Mark. Um, and he was wrestling. Um, so, therefore, right here is your 1 of 25 rare edition Aaron Stevens. I see the gi. He's got the North American Championship on. That part, I don't know if it will come with. It might. Um, it's a titles, great photo of him. They, titles are very, very expensive to get done. Um, mm-hmm. He was amazing. Um, very good and technically sound in the ring, and can actually tell a story. You know, it was it was awesome. Um, so. Bring that last bad boy on here. Well, we were talking about stories, and this man, he doesn't need an introduction, but I, I'm going to give him to him anyways. Um, he was the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. He was formerly known as Derek Bateman in the original NXT. He then came back to WWE as part of the NXT brand. Blew up over there. Vince called him up. And you saw him sometimes. Mainly in the backstage segments, right? Um, Dixie Carter's nephew. Dixie Carter's nephew. 
And then um, I I feel like then he refound himself um, on the indies and did control your narrative um, and control your narrative. A lot of, a lot of people have been to or even seen or heard, including a sevens, the CYN on his boots um, is from that. So right now he is signed to the NWA. Um, he is the NWA world heavyweight champion and the Ohio Valley wrestling world heavyweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the overman because he is over man. EC three. Oh, he's got the belt on. That's so fantastic. This, this belt will come with the chase. It will not come with the base model, but with the chase. Um, it is real leather and it is 3D printed and everything else with hand painted decals. Um, this guy has been in the business for a long time, uh, making title belts. I'm still trying to work out a deal for the um, Aaron Stevens chase. I think I got it. <laughs> um, <laughs> he, I believe he actually just texted me. I, I see my thing went off with his name, but. Um, so we're looking good. And then this is when he actually won the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, um, ending the worst NWA World Heavyweight Championship run of see, all time. Everyone says that, but I, I don't think that way, man. Because, yes, okay, he didn't have a social media. He didn't promote that way. But you got to understand, he is an old school wrestler in a modern day era where people kind of don't give those people credit that much anymore, like how they should. You know, um, yeah, he. I don't discredit him. I discredit maybe the, the, booking, the booking of the way they had him with the title. So it's it's like the Jinder better. Mahal factor. Jim Jinder Mahal is not the worst wrestler to ever hold no. the WWE. Oh, no, he's actually pretty good. He's <laughs> like, pretty damn good. But the way they booked Jinder Mahal, they booked him as the worst world heavyweight champion of all time. You also got to understand, though, the NWA at that point in time. It's not that they were losing credibility or, or any of that, because I don't want to say that at all, because it, it's definitely not what I'm trying to say. It helped them almost boom up because of Tyrus being a part of Fox and Tyrus promoting the championship actually on Fox. Mm -hmm. That gave more more insight to that brand, to that company. Um, and then with, with EC3 doing everything with right now with Exodus Pro, um, I think it's fantastic because it's, it's giving, you know, it's giving independent guys and even guys who've made it somewhere and maybe have fallen down the, the road a little bit at a platform to, you know, to attempt to get up there. Yeah, because um, EC3 is defending that title everywhere. He's every, not just defending it on NWA. He's got a couple shows coming up in Michigan where he's going to be defending the title. Wow. wow. Yeah. It's either Michigan or Ohio. We get we get calls from Ohio now. It's it's I'm tired. In Wisconsin. Um, and Wisconsin, <laughs> which is a strange but a, a not unwelcome. Um, so I have a question. Then, what's up, buddy? So obviously I'm yourself. Bring these photos up while he's asking the question. Yeah. So obviously yourself, A Sevens, Congo, little bit easy to to say, hey, go ahead and you know make a figure, or you know somebody be super honored. How did this go about with Aaron Stevens and EC three? How how was that approach? Is there is this a license? Thing, or is this just you know a, a personal uh, thing it's that more, happened? It was a personal matter. Um, so okay, I'm gonna tell you. Keep that photo up. Actually, we're gonna take the photo down and then go back to the photos in a second because I want to play this. So the match that saved my life. Um, I said this exactly what I'm about to say right now during the preface. Um, remember how earlier I said to Sandow in front of some people that I didn't feel confident, confident in myself. And I didn't know if I could talk cause I'd be too scared. And then he's like, cut a promo. So before I cut the promo, you know, I told him like, Hey, you know, I tried to commit suicide. The match that saved my life was EC three versus Matt Hardy for the TNA world title. They both did a switch. EC3 was a heel, then he became babyface in that match. Matt Hardy was a babyface, and he went heel. Because um, they listened to the crowd, right? They did, did that switch. That saved my life. I told him, um, EC3 about that, 
and he in a way took me under his wing but you know he allowed me to uh you know ask him questions to get to get some shit off my chest and if i ever needed to talk to him talk to him and so i have a thank you for that and for that opportunity Um, and also sean gave me that opportunity at the um before access pro had their first show is at a bar and if it wasn't for that then none of this would be possible none this whole brand wouldn't be possible because this this was the the first one this this had to happen for all this shit to happen mm-hmm. right so um talk I, I told that story to him right and he's like great thank you you know thank you um, that means a lot to me thank you made an action figure for him brought it up to the nwa um pay-per-view that was in ohio um he loved it he was in fucking awe like loved it the shoulder piece for him and all that shit loved it sandow loved it and i said my goal is to get you part of a line um i don't know how don't know when but i'm, I'm i want to work on something he's like all right let's do it and i'm like i don't you know i uh I want to do something on my own, right? I can pay for this. Let me do it. Cool. And, you know, I slowly would show progress. And they're like, hey, you got the head done. What do you like it? What do you think? You like it? He's like, yeah. Um, I want to, can I send you this photo really quick so you can put it up? Yeah. So this photo was WWE's head sculpt of Aaron Stevens. Or, uh, not Aaron Stevens. Um, EC3. And this is my head sculpt of EC3. And uh, I showed it to EC3, and he was like, holy shit. Like, that's that's impressive, dude. And so, like, I was I was very happy, um, obviously. And so he was like, yeah, I'm fully in. I'm fully in. Like, let, let's, let's fucking go. That's literally what he told me. Let's fucking go. Um... Did it send? Yep. Cool. Um, there it is. Yeah. So that was WBEs versus my company. Um, and with my brand, I try to make it realistic, but also a little bit animated because mm-hmm. I want I want it to be fun, right? It's an action figure. Yeah. Like like old Hasbro. It's it's realistic to an extent, but also animated. And so he was like, "All right, let's let's do it." I was like, okay, well, I'm also sculpting your torso by hand. He's like, what do you mean by hand? I'm like, with clay and plastic and sculpting it. He's like, wow, okay. And so I showed him the picture today, and he said, when can I buy some? I was like, older horses. These are just prototypes. Give me <laughs> but so, um, but no, I mean, it's it's an honor. Um, so we can put those photos back up if you want. Oh yeah. Um, but you can see the abs all hand sculpted. That, that torso has never been seen before. Um, so, and the, the arms do move, and they, they look um, very similar to the to the WWE um, basics and the Mattels. Um, this one right here is with the actual title, um, and you can see his knee pads and his boots and all that that good stuff. Um, and you can do see on his chest there is no tattoo there's because he had this um this title win before he got that chest piece done oh so this is going to be based off when he won the title actually exactly but yeah, on, his, on his chase one that we'll, we'll see it later you know, you'll see it what do you think about these head sculpts i think they look fantastic thank you i think i yeah i mean i think they look i think they look great <clears throat> i'm always so what we've talked about this before uh realism isn't always absolutely the necessary thing some of my favorite action figures um from wrestling were the wwe superstar ones which really only had the articulation at the hips but like they had the bigger hit the bigger arms the bigger legs but the faces were very you know true to form on them i don't think that like every action figure needs to be 
spot on, anatomically correct every single time. But if I looked at that and somebody said, hey, who is this? And, and being a wrestling fan uh, that we are, I could go, yeah, that's EC3. And I think that's the biggest thing mm-hmm. that needs to happen when you do a figure. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree because if if you can at least have at least sixty percent, you know, recognizable features, then, then it's not good. That hence why I didn't go with these head sculpts of you know my other ones because they were just garbage, you know. No, you're a perfectionist. Yeah, I mean, if I'm spending thousands of dollars, I want it right. Low big boot, getting that big angle on it, getting that test angle. Yeah, I, mean, I just I'm so proud. They all look so great. Thank you. This is oh we'll sorry, have, we'll have our own T-shirts and stuff. And then if anybody is you know um, wondering, I'll be at a lot of wrestling shows. And I'm bringing all these figures um, to to my gimmick table um, so everybody can see them. Um, you know, you, you just can't take them out of the packaging, but we can we can definitely display them and answer any questions um, that myself right now can't either answer or isn't seen <laughs> but that was spectacular oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. One. oh yes yeah. yep, yep. The the chase. sorry give me one second here <laughs> this one is so cool so this right here is the overman in a death match is he gonna um, have blood on his face <laughs> So I'm I want to potentially say yes, but I'm potentially saying no because I I need it to be confirmed from the man himself if that's what he wants. That's the most important thing with my brand. Um, I ask the workers, what do you want? Like, what do you want? It's not to, hard, you know. It's not hard to ask what they want. No, because no, we have Patel. No, no. They'll just fucking make something. Mm-hmm. I, I want I want their input. Um. For the EC3 figure, the first 10 people who, who get it will also get a free t-shirt of the Overman logo. And by the way, I did make this logo for EC3. Fuck yeah. A little cheap pop for myself. I know. <laughs> so in collecting in figures, and it doesn't matter what you collect, whether it's figures, trading cards, uh, anything. Everybody always wants more. Everybody always wants to know what's the next thing. So, after this series, is uh, are we seeing how this one goes, or do we already have a second series in the works? I have some in the works, and it's okay. It's um, you, you don't have to tell us anything about it, oh, but no, just no, no, people no, no. just know there's oh, no, there's a no, second no, series no, no. in the works. It's quite extreme. No, oh, okay. See, if you guys, you guys remember the shocker? <clears throat> you guys remember the shocker, right? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, some would it's, say. It's got a, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like it's potentially got a little hack in it, you know. Yeah, okay. Hmm. A kind well, of figure I, that would dry I, up a seat. Are you still here for that? Come on. We still I, is who's still here? His name is Ryan from the gym. Come on, Ryan. Oh, he said you give the best head. Sculpts. Well, screw all that crap. No. <laughs> I said the little hat, you know. So can I ask, okay, so I, I and obviously you've got the custom Matt Hardys. Yeah. Who is somebody that you would like to sculpt? <laughs> Other, I'm outside of the Matt Hardys. I, I, I think that is a given on here. Um, as a fan, Kevin Thorne. Okay. Um, because Mordecai has never had a figure. Kevin Thorne did. Um, Abyss only had two figures. Abyss would be great being signed to WWE. Can't do it. Um, some somebody brought up a legend um, named Bruiser Brody. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, um, I mean, if if you're I, sitting there, yeah, that'd be that'd be stellar. I'm working on a. Um, potential line that will be an exclusive for Canada um, for TCW Tony Candelo Wrestling out in Winnipeg. Um, it can be bought still from at my gimmick table or my website. 
um it's it's not not confirmed yet you know not confirmed from hit them gavel. take all this with a grain of salt right. <laughs> but Tony Candela will have his first ever action figure hell yeah by next year that's that's my goal even if it's a legendary one of one of one or rare one of 25 that's my goal um because man's not getting any younger he's helped a hell of a lot of people out you know mm-hmm. um and it's about time where a green guy like myself can just say you know in in my work of art i can say hey thanks my hope is that all of this flourishes and that every oh, up and coming and every it's up and coming tamant who wants an action figure can come to you and get a figure oh yeah so um when when I do my pre-orders, I'm running into a little bit of an issue because I'm like, do I want to do it as, um, like, have a hundred of them ready, or should I do um, buy to order, right, or order order buy make, or some shit, yeah, order buy make. Um, so still figuring it out, you know, because again, it's only two people. Right now, I don't have a whole warehouse of people, right? We're, we, you know, we're, we don't do a sweatshop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank God for that. Hopefully that's not crossing the line on my... Uh, oh, we've said worse shit on this show. I, I assure so, you. <laughs> cheers. Genuinely, genuinely, in the three, almost three years we've been running, we've only had to edit one thing out of any show we've ever done. That was my bad. Oh, no, it was mine. It was the oh. quiz show bit. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. Oh no, had... uh, I thought no. We took that whole. We took the one whole episode down the Woody Allen one. Oh yeah, because this guy called me a Woody Allen apologist live on air for a bit. Oh, we and to I took. It wasn't that that took it down. <laughs> I acted unprofessional because I just straight up left for thirty full minutes, and I came back. I was like, "Do you have something to say to me?" Because that was that was the line that that was the line you crossed, and it was like the. Like I looked at him, I was like, "That whole episode's coming down." No. Yeah. Now I have a question for both of you. Yeah. Who do you want to see in a in my line? I want Adam two Wick. names of each. Adam Wick and Maximilian. Okay. 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 I'm, I'm sorry. Give me one indie name. Uh huh. Give me one big name. Okay. Adam Wick's definitely the indie name. Let me big write this name? down. Let me, what did it do? One second. Let me write this down. Okay. In a big name, obviously not signed to WWE or AEW, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. So yeah. Adam Wick is the indie guy I would go with. The Effie. Effie? Effie. I think Effie would be a great Barbie style action figure. That dude. Did- as Ken, oh, yeah. as a Ken, uh, Effie yeah. Ken doll. So I have to, I have two. Like, okay, so I have somebody on the on the the local independent scene as well. But yeah. I have two non-local independent scenes, and the main reason for this is because of the facial expressions. Uh, one is Shane Douglas. So, oh, that, oh, yep. Off air. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I have to look up the name. Uh, and the it read you loud and clear on that one. Um, and the other one, because of his facial expressions, Mance Warner. Mance mm. Mance has just like the, the, you know, the Ooh. real wide eyes thing like that. Ooh, and this is uh just me being a nerd with action figures. That could be a rivalry pack where it's Effie and Mance Warner because mm-hmm. they're having one hell of a year against each other in GCW. Hoping there's a, a, a tournament of uh tournament of things um and i'm gonna throw this out there because i don't see a female figure there um the female component to uh ace evans straight out of saginaw ray uh, line ray larson so uh yep <laughs> <laughs> i was trying not to say that one ethan well i because then in the third series the green mamba could appear stop reading my fucking mind <laughs> Because right now, since he's been commenting so much tonight, uh, one of my dream interviews is the entirety of Straight Out of Saginaw, and that's just because it'll be oh, yeah. Ethan and Nick 
just fuck it'll be ethan and sean ripping on each other and me nick and ray just sitting in a corner looking awkward you know what i sent you a photo earlier i want you to put it up it's okay me, douglas sandman and guido at the bar mm-hmm. yeah let me get I want that you put it up it takes like 10 seconds you're good you just said who i want you to say his name shane who? douglas shane douglas yeah so uh shane douglas and i were we're talking it's nothing's confirmed but it might be extreme i so when i think of this so your your expertise here is lying in like the the head sculpting we've already heard a great head uh mr party <laughs> gives great mr party gives great head i that's a sign <laughs> that's gonna end up at one of your events um if, if it does I'm fucking. I'm, I'm taking a picture of that motherfucker. So if you, if, you're, if anyone's listening and I'm coming to any, any of my shows, and we'll talk more about those before I leave, you gotta, you know, get a picture of me. <laughs> we don't talk. We don't talk about grizzly. We don't, we don't talk about that anymore. <laughs> that's like. That's that's, like a, that's a year ago. Now. That's a year ago. Um, Dude, grizzly pro was so good, so good. Uh, until then, it wasn't. And until, until that day. Until that fateful night. Were, were you? Were you both I there? Was there. He was there. Okay, so I was oh. leaving work. He was texted me saying, there, don't come. He was I was like, like do don't. not come. Yeah. I was sitting there. So, okay, we'll get this. It's one thing I want to touch on the, on the, they on really the facial thing. Kenny O'Neill over. Sorry. The, uh, agreed. The, uh, so when you brought up Bruiser Brody, I thought about the head sculpting, the scars in the forehead, yes. the Abdu- like Abdullah the Butcher, the amount of that. Uh, a lot of these guys that are in like Big Japan Wrestling and in and, and FMW, like Onita and things like that, just guys with massive scar tissue. But Shane Douglas has such a defined, like the wrinkles like, from it's time. Ugly. Yeah. 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 And, and and so it's one of those things I'm like, he could do such a good job. And, and then especially because Shane's still got the, the, the light hair, the beard, yep. things like that. It was that. Um real I don't I man, I don't even want to go. So basically the dark side of the ring, the short version for Grizzly Pro, because I was thinking yeah, we'll save that for off air. Do not talk about that on my, it. No, I'm just saying all I'm saying on this one was I agree with you on that. And the part of where I was like, yo, we're leaving was when was when Jason was when Hotch stormed out. I was like, when Hotch stormed out, I was like, yo, I'm getting oh, out of here. Off I was air sitting topic. outside. <laughs> off That's air it. topic. Yeah, off, off air because. Yeah, because we're getting we're, we're over on time because this has been so much fun. We're so over on time because I just heard the front door open. My bad, guys. No, you're no, good. You're I've loved this. I this more importantly, we got through the figures. That's the important yeah. thing before it got derailed. Yeah, I which was is that. phenomenal. Be, before before we leave, I just want to say a little quick thing. Uh, yes. for for the shows coming up, I got. Um, I'll run those down again. Yep. So we got um, KOA. I'm in the main event against Congo Kong. Um, this is in Petersburg, Michigan. Um, it is free. All right, it's free with park admission. Um, bell time is 6 p.m. Um, and my goal is to have these figures in hand for them to uh, be purchased on this date. Um, my only dream that my father wanted to see to see happen was for me to win that KOA world title. Um, and damn it, it's gonna fucking happen. His that's my dream also is to win that title, but I'm, I gotta win it for my dad. Cody yeah. wants to talk about his story for his dad. His dad got to see him wrestle. My dad never fucking did. This is my time, not as Mr. Party Preston Riker, but as Preston Spangler. I'm fucking winning this title. Somehow, oh, yeah. I don't care if I could go through Congo. I don't care if I could go through their world champion. I'm getting this title by the end of the year. Fuck yeah. And then brings us to Sunday, April 14th. And this is coming back to St. Clements Hall in Toledo, Ohio. I'm having my first ever talk show segment. Um, very excited, very pumped, very grateful to have this opportunity. This is called Frat Party Memoirs, and uh, I have a lot of party stories to tell you because trust me, I got a lot of them because I'm Mr. Party and I bring the party. This is UPW and Marquette Mania. This is May 4th. Um, very, very excited. A lot of big names, um, including the mouth of the south, Jimmy Hart, Gangrel, um, LAX, uh. Uh, Ken Anderson, um, Shark Boy, no, Shark Boy, God damn it! My, my, my 
picture is not there, but I'm going to be there. Um, you, you'll see me in one of the Rumble entrants. Uh, very, very grateful um, that Peter believes in me and is giving me an opportunity. So thank you for that. Uh, next is this Saturday. I potentially will win my first title. Um, is the AACW United States Champion or Championship, I should say. It's a title tournament. Um, and I face Justin Danger. Um, it's in Kokomo, Indiana. This man hits hard, but I hit harder because I bring my cup. And I got some in my cup. That's Red Solo Cup. I fill you up. Let's have a party. Kokomo, Indiana. We're going to party. Um, while we're at it, I'm also going to be at Shogun on May 11th. Um, then I have May 5th. I'm back in Toledo for CIW Wrestling. I have another talk show segment. Mm-hmm. Um, and April 27th, you can see me at Lethal Lucha. So, very, very That's fun. the one in Muskegon, yeah. correct? What's that? That one's in Muskegon, correct? I believe so, yeah. yeah. And then I'm going back up to Canada, to Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, um, sometime either in June or July or even both. Still going to um, discuss all that stuff, but uh, we got some dates. Um, very, very pumped and very grateful again to Tony Candelo for the opportunity. Um, uh, just words, words can't thank you enough. And my dream is to become their champion one day and, and become a um, – uh, a traveling, you know, champion from a different country, like that by itself is is amazing. Um, so, thank yeah. you, thank you again so much. Yeah, for thank you, on, bringing yeah, all this, this to excellent. us. This has been fucking amazing. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, once again, if anyone's looking to get trained, uh, Congo Kong um, Academy, you can look them up on Facebook um, under Steve Wilson. Um, hit them up because you know. We, we just, we want to train people or even people are trained and they want to get some more ring time in or learn some, you know, something different. Um, let's get, let's get you going. Um, he, he's, he's treated me with, uh, nothing but respect. Um, and he does not have good words to say about that fucking man. I love him. I call him dad, dad. I love you. Uh, thank you for always believing in me. Thank you for tonight for letting me be able to come on the uh, podcast, not go to training. Anytime. Oh. Anytime. Uh, I was like, I was like, hold but, on. He's thinking he's not us. Guys, uh, <laughs> on the podcast and uh, uh, let me live my dream. So what I will say is, and it, it, not Kenny Omega or that, but I bid you adieu. And uh, Mr. Party, I'm out. Good night. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for me to present my line. And folks, the line will be up very soon for sale. Um, you can go to TrueWrestlingEvolution.com to find out more or find me on Instagram under True Wrestling Evolution and Facebook under, under True Wrestling Evolution. My name is Preston Spangler. My wrestling name is Mr. Party Preston Riker. Have a good night. Thank you all. My name is Clinton Davis. You can find me at PK Batman. That chuckle fucker right above me is the Hoochie Daddy Ethan James. You can find him at Hoochie Daddy EJ. And we are on a forklift. Thank you again, Preston. We and- love you, Judy. We love you, Judy. Have a good night, everyone. Love you, Mom. Love you.